Built in 1950, Darlington Raceway was the first super speedway to host a NASCAR race. The track was originally designed for open wheel racing, and it got its famous egg shape because the land's original owner didn't want to see his favorite fishing hole get disturbed. NASCAR races here twice each year, and the second race is one of the most prestigious races of them all, the Southern 500. Over the past 50 years or so, Darlington has earned a reputation of being the one of the toughest and most unforgiving tracks in the country. So what's the big deal with this place anyway? What is it about Darlington that makes it so tough? Well, first of all, it's got a really narrow racing surface, which means that the ideal racing line brings you very close to the wall. Second, turns one and two are longer than three and four, and they also have more banking. That means you'll need a different technique for each end of the racetrack. Third, the corner exits here can be brutal because the banking rolls off more quickly than you think. So it's really easy to run out of racetrack as you exit off of turns two and four. Okay, think I've scared you enough? Let's get in the car so we can check out the Lady in Black. Crossing the start finish line, we're at full throttle going about 170 miles an hour. Stay close to the wall and start your turn into turn one at the beginning of the darkened groove. You should be just under 180 at this point. Roll out to about half throttle and work the car down so that the left side tires are below the broken white line. Halfway through turn one, quickly get back to full throttle and point the car towards the outside wall. Momentum will carry you towards the wall as you gently steer the car to the apex of turn one and two. You'll be going around 165 at this point. The car should settle near the wall and will start working its way back down to the broken white line as you exit turn two. You'll need to be low and near the line as you exit the corner because you want to hit the back straight at full throttle. Coming off a of two, the car will drift out very close to the wall as you exit the corner. You should be above 170 as you hit the back straight. Maintain full throttle until you approach the groove entering turn three. You'll top out at almost 190 here. When you hit the groove, get out of the throttle and smoothly roll on the brake about halfway. Work the car down to the broken white line, but don't cross it like you did at the other end of the track. If you do, you'll get shot into the outside wall. Halfway through three, roll out of the brake and start applying throttle. At the apex of three and four, you'll be doing about 140. The car will drift up the track, but don't let it get as high as it did in turns one and two, because the higher you drift, the harder it'll be to get a good exit off of four. In turn four, you should be at full throttle as you work the car back down to the broken white line. Again, keep it low because the car will drift toward the wall at the exit. You'll be going around 150 at full throttle as you hit the front stretch and get back to the start finish line. Let's watch that again. Best laps will be right around 30 seconds, but this track chews up tires so those times will start to increase in a hurry. Since you're so close to the wall all the time here, be very careful when you adjust your throttle and braking points as the tires wear. That's Darlington. Now you'll find out pretty quickly that it's a challenge just to turn fast laps here all by yourself. Throw in 42 other cars and then you'll know why this place commands the respect that it does and why the drivers consider winning the Southern 500 to be such a huge accomplishment. Patience and mental toughness are critical to success here. If your concentration slips for even a split second, you'll be in the wall in a hurry.